Correctional officers, known as COs, are quite a bit like police officers, but also have some differences. Let's take a look. Correctional officers have a significant amount of authority. Some COs are uncomfortable with this authority and do not know how to handle it. Other COs revel in it and misperceive the bonds of authority given to them as a representative of the state. Some officers who perceive themselves as powerless in relation to the administration, the courts, and society in general may react to this perceived powerlessness by misusing their little bit of power over other inmates. Today, correctional officers probably think that inmates have too many rights. One would assume that the general relationship between officers and inmates is one of hatred, but that's not necessarily the case. Posturing and vocalization from either side come from a small number, with most inmates and officers living in an uneasy state of truce, hoping that no one goes over the line on either side. Most correctional officers and inmates prefer to live in peace and understand that they must treat each other with some modicum of respect and get along. An officer's ethics and professionalism are seriously threatened when relationships with inmates become personal. The use of force is legal and sometimes necessary element of correctional supervision. Without a strong moral and ethical code, correctional officers may find themselves drifting into relativistic egoism. Behavior that benefits the individual is acceptable despite long-term effects or inconsistencies with their duty and their personal value system. The result is a feeling of disillusionment and animosity, and the side effects can be serious dissatisfaction and depression. Community corrections is a term that encompasses halfway houses, work release centers, probation, parole, and any other intermediate sanctions. Professionals in community corrections do not have the same power as police or correctional officers to use physical force, but they do have a great deal of non-physical power over the clients they control. Discretion exists during supervision in the following ways. Probation officers decide when to file reports. They decide what recommendations to make, and they make numerous decisions along the way. Probation and parole officers can be described as adopting different roles on the job. Different ethical issues can be discussed in relation to each types of those roles. For instance, a punitive law enforcement officer may need to examine his or her use of authority. This officer may tend to use illegal threats and violate the due process protections that each client deserves. The welfare or therapeutic worker may need to think about neutral law rights and privacies as well as autonomy. These officers tend to infringe on clients' privacies because of their mindset that they're helping the client, and indeed they might be, but the client may prefer less help and more privacy. The passive time saver may violate professional ethics in not performing duties associated with the role. Discretion exists not only at the recommendation to release stage, but also throughout supervision and corrections. Many do not submit violation reports automatically upon discovery of every offender infraction. In this way, they're like police officers who practice selective enforcement of the law. We've been discussing probation and parole officers simultaneously, but there are some important distinctions between the two. First, parolees are perceived to be more of a threat to the community, so supervision of parole officers is emphasized much more strongly than in probation, where supervision is balanced with service and counseling emphasis. The ethical issues concerning halfway houses are a combination of those that confront institutional corrections and those seen in community corrections. Halfway houses can be large institutions and staff may feel like corrections officers, in which case there are concerns that they will abuse their positions by exploiting the residents. To be in a helping profession in a system geared for punishment is a difficult challenge for anyone, and the temptation to retreat into bureaucratic, compliance, or worse, egotistic relativism is always present.